Greetings and salutations viewers, I'm Star Princess HLC, and welcome back to Corpse Party Book of Shadows. When I last left off, we finished up the chapter of Meyer, where poor Yuka got herself brainwashed by Sachiko, and was inevitably killed via a hammer to the skull, with a lovely photograph being sent off to her brother for one of the wrong endings in the original Corpse Party. Now, we have unlocked the chapter tooth, but uh, we're not gonna go into that just yet. For there are three wrong endings I still need to acquire before doing so. Because in order to unlock the last chapter of the game, we have to get every single ending in every single chapter, which include the wrong endings. So right now, I'm back in the chapter of Demise, the one with Mayu in it. And there's two I missed there. And it turns out that there was a branching path that I didn't know about. So, if you actually look where we are right now, we are currently in Classroom 1C on the second floor. Now, strangely enough, if you see the little glowy do that here, that is the notebook which we needed in order to trigger towards the true ending. If we don't pick up this notebook, we actually can go off a diverging path which leads to two wrong endings. So, for the sake of this, I'm not going to be picking up this notebook. I'm going to be going straight to 1A to get the key. I believe it's 1A that I have to get the key from. And I will catch up to you when we get to that such diverging path and get a look at these wrong endings that we're missing. Okay, this is the part where the roads are supposed to diverge. Where if you didn't get the notebook, it will lead to two wrong endings. Ends. This is actually after the part after we rescue Nana from that one trap. So, what we're supposed to do for this one, since we don't have the notebook, we have to ascend to the next area, and then we gotta try and get past classroom 2A. Here we go. Okay, let's see, where's 2A? We gotta go to 2A. Or at least, uh, past 2A. I should specify. But hopefully, this should trigger something. As soon as Mayu gets her dainty little butt over there. Ah, there we go. No more loose boards spanning this hole in the floor. And, uh, no clue what happened to it. But maybe it fell in. Either way, it's no longer possible to continue down the hall from here. Oh, you think? Fair enough. So go ahead, buddy. Show us away. Okay, fine. So. I guess I'll go up this way instead and see where this leads me. Okay, fine. As you can tell, the ref room is currently locked. So fine, let's use this door. Nope, it won't open. But maybe with the key we found, this could be a possibility. Let's try it. Darn. Hmm. Alright, give it a shot, Yoshiki. Don't break it. Ah, good thinking there, buddy. Wow. How'd you do that? Uh, you're clever, buddy. Give a shot, then. Oh. Okay. Kishinua breaking the rust off the key uncovered a label on its grip. 
Science lab, staff only. Hmm, guess that settles that. Seems like a handy key to have. Hey, cool! I don't think we actually ended up getting into there originally. So, I guess I am going to go back downstairs. Into the locker room, I think. Because I don't think I grabbed the bandages, actually, now that I think of it. That actually is what I remember now. I need the bandages in order to actually cross the gap. So, let's head back down that direction. Grab those bandages, and let's see how this will go. Alright, gathered up the loose bandages, handed them to Kishinuma, and then he obediently put them taut in a few places to test their tensile strength. That's good. It works. So we fold both strips of gauze in half, then twist the two double ply strips together to form something that resembled a braid. I'd done something similar to this once before when making rope like decorations for theater costumes, so it didn't prove to be particularly difficult. It almost felt like rope making 101. In 10 minutes, time pressed down, we had a, to, a do it yourself rope in our hands. Granted, it was pretty flimsy compared to the resin ropes you might buy at a home center, but it seemed like it would hold one person's weight just fine. Hey, sure, let's give that a shot. Alright, let's see what happens now that I go back to 2A, or at least that space between 2A, and try to use these ropes to get away. Or at least get over that gap. Come on, everybody, let's do this! Come on! Work those legs, Mayu! Come on! It was your belly and everything else that was bruised. Your legs are fine. Nana can handle it. She's got those big marks on her legs, which we know what happened to her during uh, Sa Sa Sayaka's story. Hmm, you got a point there. Yeah, that wouldn't work. Well, I wouldn't move that way. That's a good thought, actually. Hmm. That's pretty clever, actually. Alright, let's see how this is gonna go. Good luck, man. Very good luck, man. If you say so. Careful, Yoshiki! <laughs> My thoughts exactly! Don't kill off one of the good characters! <laughs> now he's gotta get brown pants. Or yellow pants, depending. Good thing you went first. I would say so. Good luck, girlfriend. Oh boy. Oh, you're dead, dead. I mean, technically, you were dead to begin with, since... Actually, no, you did lose your, your doll scrap at the beginning of your death, didn't you? Like, as soon as you got into it, you lost it somehow. I don't know how she did that. I'm sure she can handle it. What was that? Oh! Hi! No, he's not. Oh, 
boy. Okay, safe to assume she's dead. I mean, she was already dead to begin with, but for about as much time as it took a single shiver to run up and down a person's spine, the hallway was completely silent. Then, the moment Nana's foot left the floor on the other end of the hole, there was an abrupt, almost exaggerated spray of blood. The back of the strange, bloody-eyed man's massive hammer had come down hard, roughly splitting through not only the rope, but both of Nana's legs as well. That's pretty powerful, you can knock someone's legs off in one blow. Miss, you can still scream after that. Just saying. More than anything, I wanted to look away. I wanted to look away from those desperate, tear-filled eyes, that shocked, pained expression. Not to mention the sight of Nana's dangling torso with nothing at all left below the thighs. Again, that's that's pretty impressive. Well, you would have to cauterize the wound, but mm, I don't know, debatable. True. I would assume it would. I mean, really. How about focusing on either getting the hell out of there or getting her over to where you are? It's corpse party, Yoshiki. Everything about this place is messed up. How did he get on the other side so quickly? Well, to be fair, he's a ghost, so maybe he can teleport, but still, it's like... Oh, boy. Oh, he's on the other side. Never mind. Okay, I was a little concerned because he peered up behind Yoshiki. I was like, oh no. Meanwhile, we are going down this hallway. Oh, so he did get her. Okay. Well, not just consciousness, but she'd probably be freaking the hell out. I mean, how do you cope with the fact that your legs both simultaneously blew off? I don't think you can. I know, really. And we don't have Miss Yui here to try and be somewhat calm about the situation. Mm-hmm. If you say so. Uh-oh. Uh he knows the secret entrance. Of course he knows the secret entrance. Oh, 
So he can't just teleport. He needs to use the secret passages. Interesting. Okay. Okay, well, let me just quickly save here. Because I know that there are two options that I can make in this situation. Because either I can let the timer go down. Or I can make it to the science lab. So. Let's try the science lab first. Yep, the science lab door is locked. Okay, I still got 46 minutes. Or 46 seconds, so. Yep, door's locked, but we have the key. Use the lab key. Yes, it turned. Yeah, hurry. Okay, the timer disappeared on me, so. Debatable, because again, like I, I know this is gonna not end well. Um. What's what smell? Be careful. This place never has smell of vision. Uh. Oh, there's a body. Up. Oh, yep, that's a dead body bound to a chair with wire by both its wrists and ankles. Based on height and uniform, this was most likely a junior high school girl. She seems to have hot, had hot oil poured over her head, burning everything above her chest into a black and unidentifiable mess. The only discernible facial feature is a missing tongue, and that's only because its stump is still faintly visible through her broken front teeth. The wire around her wrists and ankles seem to have really dug into the skin, too, suggesting she put up a hell of a fight before taking her final breath. Oh! Oh yeah, there was that one at wrong end in, what was it, uh, Shangri-La, I believe? When one of Nana's friends was, um... Was killed by hot oil being dumped on them. Yeah. Hello, Nari. Oh, no. Of course, she wakes up when this happens. Yeah, that never happens. None of you make it out of this place alive. I don't think so. Doing. Oh boy, we're gonna play a game. This is gonna go well. It was a little girl with mad and oily black hair, spilling down her shoulders and over her chest, grudge style, and she was holding something under her arm, probably something to murder us with. As she drew out the vowel in her sadistically playful question, she triumphantly flourished this object, revealing it to be a human head. 
It was a girl's head with a perfectly uniform bob framing her face. She looked quite the quiet type. Her mouth was hanging half open, trails of blood stained onto her chin, and once again, the tongue was nowhere to be found. Oh, her other friend. Are you using the head as a ventriloquist dummy? Yep, the girl in the red dress thrust her hand up into the, her hand up into Chihaya's neck and was moving her mouth up and down while saying this like a ventriloquist with a dummy. Yeah, that's what I thought. Poor Nana. With those words, Nana lapsed back into unconsciousness on Kishinua's back, never again to awaken. So, safe to assume she died from shock? As for me and Kishinuma, we knew the chase was over. There was nothing left to say. We just stood there, petrified at the thought of what was yet to come. Well, that's another wrong end done and over with. I'm so happy this exists. So poor Nana died, knowing her friends didn't make it. That was only wrong at six. Uh, so the next wrong end will be when I count, when I let the uh, the timer count down to zero, which I have a feeling is gonna probably relate to Yoshikazu smashing her heads in. But I guess we'll see in just a few minutes. Five, four, three, two, one. Here we go! Oh, that didn't take long. She woke up just to die, isn't that lovely? The bloody-eyed man raised his right leg, then quickly brought it down onto Nana's stomach, pinning her to the ground and forcing blood from her wounds. A few stops later, what looked to be gastric juices began spewing from Nana's mouth, and her momentary consciousness was cut short as she passed out again, probably for the last time. This didn't stop the man from continuing his stomping fit, however. He was putting his whole body weight into every blow. I could hear the soft the sound of bones breaking. Nana's chances of survival were lessening with every passing moment, and they weren't good to begin with. I don't think you're gonna make him stop. Just saying. What could I do? I wanted to save her somehow, but I couldn't even move. <laughs> Get away from her, you bitch! I'll take that as a no. Oh boy. Kishinuma's attempt to save Nana was short-lived. The bloody-eyed man swatted him back like a fly and he immediately fell through a hole in the floor. Well, he's dead. Oh, hi Sachiko. Yuki? Huh. That 
wasn't quite as brutal as I expected it to be. But it obviously did not end well for anyone involved. Okay, there's only one other wrong end I have to get before we can continue on with Tooth. And that one is actually back in the chapter we finished last time, Meyer. Apparently there is one little thing I gotta do with Yuka, and uh, I'm sure it's gonna be absolutely lovely. So, let's finish this up, shall we? Okay, we're back here in Meyer, and we're actually right back at the science lab section. So, apparently what we are supposed to do in this situation is just keep examining options. Just keep examining things in this area and make sure that your darkening gets up to a hundred percent. That's apparently what I'm supposed to do in this area. So. I'm right now at 60%, so I'm just gonna keep examining the door here. I'm at 90. Okay, this should be the... This should be the push we need. Okay, let's see what happens. Uh, perhaps? I couldn't move any part of my body. I just followed completely limp and my vision had gone black. I felt like I was being swallowed up by the darkness and there was nothing I could do to stop it. It was seeping into every part of me. Big brother, help. That was it? That was kind of lackluster in comparison as well. So I just faint and possibly die in that situation. Okay. Good to know. Good to know indeed. Okay, well. That was the last wrong ending I had to worry about. So... At least I think it's the last wrong ending. Let me just do a quick double check on that. Let's see here. It should be in the options menu. Correct. Yep, ending list. Yep. We have everything covered. So, next episode we will be tackling, finally, the uh, supposedly wrong, um, the supposedly final ending, which we all know isn't, but we'll be tackling at least the second to last ending, well, second to last chapter, I should say, Tooth. And this one shouldn't take too long, at least in terms of getting the ending, so it will be a quick and simple process in order to unlock the last bit. So, we'll be tackling Tooth in the next episode. But for now, this is Star Princess HLC saying thank you very much for watching and have a fond farewell.